Nope, that's a bathroom. Where do we sleep? Is it the couch? Oh my god. Today's video is gonna have a lot of firsts. First, I have absolutely no idea where we are traveling to today. And second, hopefully we're gonna be checking out a lounge with its first destination in Europe. It's a very popular one in the States. But before we get too far into that, quick introduction, I'm Elaytra Beck. And I'm Jordan Beck. And this is Around the World of Beck. We right now live in England and we are trying to visit 50 countries before we move. Today is number 17. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. We are going to be going to Finland. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do it. That's awesome. <laughs> So this is the American Express Lounge, which is its first debut here in Europe at London Heathrow Airport. All they require to get in is that you're a card member. So we have the Amex Platinum and you can enjoy all the amazing food that they have. And it's certainly better than some of the other lounges. You have a butter croissant, seasonal vegetables and free champagne. We finally arrived here in Helsinki, Finland, our 17th country. After a slight delay in our flight in three hours, very bumpy ride, blasted with cold air, we made it. And uh, every time we go through border control, even though it was a relatively easy process this time, only required uh, showing our CDC vaccine card and that we had a pre-departure test to come here. We made it through, did a little happy dance and now we're gonna head towards the train. So as I mentioned before, Electra has no idea at all, in the slightest, what's going on for this trip. Only thing she has been told was to pack for cold, and as you can clearly see, it is a freezing country, and it's only gonna get colder. Burn. So we're trying to buy tickets to get to Helsinki Central. Uh, hopefully I'm doing this right. Just gotta pay here, it's pretty cheap, and then, Catch the next train. So after taking the train from the airport, we have a ride at the Helsinki Central train station. And on the way over here, Elytra asked me, are we gonna check into a hotel? Uh, to be honest, Elytra, we're not checking into a hotel tonight. So that means- We're not camping, are we? <laughs> no, we're not camping, no. Uh, <laughs> so we are gonna be checking the bag here at these convenient lockers located just behind us. Uh, it costs about six, six euro for 24 hours. So we're gonna leave our bag here and uh, come back for it sometime later. We've never really talked about our top destinations on this channel before, so it's pretty much impossible for you to know why Finland is such a cool surprise, but the Nordic countries, all of them, have been really high on my list, despite the fact that I hate the cold but we did Iceland in October and it was everything we were hoping it to be and so much more. So I'm very excited to be here right now and truly no idea what he's got planned. Normally I'm involved in the planning at least a little bit, ask my opinions, I vote yes and no on stuff. He does all the research. This time I have absolutely zero idea. Well, okay, I always have ideas. So I'm thinking maybe we'll do a hot air balloon because I've mentioned that countless times and that sounds very Jordan to surprise me with something like that, but it's also freezing. So as we were flying in, he pointed out the cruise ships, which was either a 
solid misdirect or a slip up. So I'm thinking maybe something on the water. I don't know. I could see something with sledding because there's a lot of snow, but that's it. That's all I got. Different modes of transportation. That's all I, <laughs> that's apparently all I can come up with. But we got some hours to kill and the city is completely dead right now. So we're gonna see what we can find to do and catch up with you guys later. Jordan's got something planned for this evening and I'm excited. Yeah, it seriously was no joke. The city completely dead. We struggled for a couple of hours just to find something to do, which is my fault, I guess. Didn't quite read all the guidance that was going on here in Helsinki. I guess uh, restaurants shut down at about 6 p.m and it's difficult really to just sit anywhere but now we're on to the fun part of the trip the trip portion is going to be amazing i'm tired it's officially 10 40. i'm ready to call it a night and go to bed however we are still at the train station so jay please tell me what is it time to go do well sticking with the themes for this trip uh waiting <laughs> Not quite. We're going to be doing another first, and that is we're going to be taking a sleeper train. <laughs> we're going to be taking it north. Like north north? Like north north. Okay, interesting. We were just looking at the, the northern lights pool, and it is dark red up north, so is that it? We're gonna go see the movement? Maybe. We are going to the acclaimed home of Santa Claus. <laughs> go to the North Pole. Okay, all right. Okay, we can do that. Just as the train was rolling by, we could see that there's a restaurant and a place that you can take your dog to go to the bathroom, which is pretty neat. And Jordan says that we are up top, so we gotta go up some stairs. Made it. All right, Jordan's mistaken. This is not my first time on a sleeper car, but I have not done it since I was a little kid. So I wonder if these beds are gonna feel a little bit different now that I'm an old person. Well, we made it. And I booked this train way in advance, probably back in like August, September timeframe. Uh, this train sold out pretty quick, especially the sleeper cabins. We have the deluxe version. So that means that you have pretty spacious bunks with your own shower and toilet in the room. Um, this is a very nice sleeper sleeper cabin, it looks like. This is also my first time being in a sleeper cabin, so I'm a little worried. I'm a light sleeper, but you know, we're on here for 12 hours. I bet I can get some sleep. And we can watch the Finnish landscape pass us by as we go to sleep. So this contraption is where the bathroom and the shower are. I'm gonna look like Buddy the Elf over here trying to take a shower. I guess you pull this lever and it moves over and it locks in place. You've got a drain and a faucet and I'm assuming soap with an overhead like spout. It's all good, you know, it, it works. Then you uh, press the lever again and it goes back into place. Easy peasy. And there you go. There's our premium benefit of the room. They have already come by and got our tickets. So we are good. They said good night and we're technically within the quiet hours at this point. So um, I've donned my PJs and I am ready for an iffy night's sleep. Um, I'm excited to see what we've got in store tomorrow. So we will catch up with you guys in the morning and let you know how it went. Good morning. I would say last night went better than either of us could have expected. Jordan, who is six foot three, fit on the bed, which is good. That's, we were a little bit worried when we first saw them. And my superpower is that I can sleep anywhere at any time. So I had no issues, slept all through the night. 
Uh, shower was a bit cramped. It's one of those things where you have to hit the button and you only get like 15 seconds of water to try and use as, uh, as little as possible. But we made it, we are clean, we are well rested. And all I know right now is that Jordan told me to put as many layers on as possible, which is not my favorite thing. Um, <laughs> but you know, at least we've got all of these nice thermals and hats and that kind of thing, so. We'll get there. And while I am finishing getting ready, Jordan is out exploring the train. After 12 hours of riding on this train, I'm finally ready to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a little cramped and I'm done. <laughs> and right now it's negative five degrees Celsius, lots of snow around us. We're gonna catch a cab. That's our next step. I booked this sucker like back in September and I'm glad it's finally paying off. We've got an amazing suite for later and game activities while we're here. There's like these cool cabins, log cabins, this cozy feeling and I'm here for it. I'm ready. We don't have much time to talk, so we'll do more about the resort later. But for now, we're gonna do our first activity which involves what this place is famous for. You'll see just a sec, let's go. Hello. Yes, we're here. You are back? Yes. 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 Good. Well, we made it to the activity. I am super excited. Although we showed up, I'm wearing four pairs of pants already and they were like, we're not gonna be warm enough because this is the coldest activity that they have. So they gave us this fancy little adorable outfit. We're gonna put that on, walk over, and then we're going husky sledding. So when you are stopping, it's a good idea to fix the brakes at least once. Then it stays still much, much easier. Sometimes the dog is jumping so powerful way, but even if you are standing here, the sled slowly just slides forward, but if you kick, then it stays still. <laughs> oh, this is weird. Okay, a little bit break, Jay. That was not something I'd ever thought I'd do in my entire life. But these guys were so friendly. He was thirsty the whole time. And this one kept checking on us to make sure that we were doing okay. <laughs> it was so much fun. I like the working puppers. I wish I had something for them other than just pats. But I think they said that we get to go and check out the puppies or the younger ones now, which would be super cool. So let's see. <laughs> I 
Yeah, you want some milk? Oh. You want some love too, huh? Now you're not puppy no more. Huh? So these guys here, as well as the cage next door, are about three and a half months old. And they're so cute. I just, just want to take them. And they keep trying to bite my glove. <laughs> but these guys are so intelligent. They'll start training here soon. And they learn as quick as a minute to four years. And they kind of just train their entire lives. So the front two on the sled are the pack leaders. They're the ones that kind of control where the uh, turning and they lead the other dogs. The middle one's going to be the fastest. And the last two are going to be the most powerful ones that, that can actually help with the turning. Thank you. There you go. Oh, it smells good. Mm, that's good. It's like cinnamon and floral. It's like a tea. It's good. We tried to get into this room a little bit earlier before we went into the Husky excursion. However, the lock was frozen, so they had to come out here, thaw the lock. Now we're ready to go in. Um, I have not seen this. Jordan did all of the booking, so he wants to get my reaction going in. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's so cozy. It's so cute! Where do we sleep? <laughs> oh, is it in here? Nope, that's a bathroom. Where do we sleep? Is this the couch? Oh my gosh! This is cool! Okay, I found where we sleep. Knock the backpack off. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm gonna fall. This is so cute. This is unbelievable. Oh my gosh. This is incredible. So, beautiful skylight view. Bed. That's amazing. Frosty. Her reaction was everything I had hoped for when I had booked this room. It's so worth it. And I'm so excited that we are here finally. All the changes and regulations. I'm just, I'm here in this amazing one of a kind glass teepee room. And it's got so many amazing features. It's got a fireplace. It's got a private shower, which unfortunately only has about 20 minutes of hot water. That's how cold it is. It has to recycle all that. And then you have these stairs that go up to the top where we can just snuggle and watch the stars. And hopefully if we're lucky, we'll get the Northern Lights streaming across. So for now, while I would like to stay and enjoy the room, we are so hungry as we haven't eaten yet. And we're gonna take the snowy path outside to the restaurant here at the resort and enjoy some fine Finnish cuisine. Oh my gosh, the food was so good. I got the burger, Elytra got the salmon, and it was probably the second best salmon we've ever had. The first probably was Iceland, that, that was pretty incredible. I, I would highly recommend eating here at this restaurant. So for now, we're just gonna walk around and see what this little village has to offer. We're not gonna record too much because you can see the lighting is getting not so great for filming. And then we're gonna go back to our room where we'll chill out and catch up with you guys later with an activity that involves some reindeer at 8.30.
we did exactly what we said we were gonna do. Just stayed inside of our cabin. It's a beautiful haven of warmth with all of this cold, so much appreciated. And it is now 8.30 and we are waiting to do our final activity of the evening. Um, something with reindeer, not exactly sure. Uh, I'm excited. Hopefully we get some footage. It's uh, dark outside, but we'll see. There's room for two persons in one sleigh, so two in each. Yep, good. And we're going to a dark forest, so there is hard to see anything. So just the idea is keep your head and legs inside. This is pretty cool. We're just the two of us going to be chilling out here in this fur-lined uh, little sleigh and be pulled by a reindeer into the dark forest where hopefully we can see the northern lights. It's already kind of visible in the horizon, but it's super, super faint. So we'll, we'll see what photos we can take here because video is going to be difficult. Oh, ho, ho. There, there they are. Oh, wow. Yeah, there they are. That's they're amazing. Oh, there's a little bit of clouds, but let's hope that the ones are going away. Wow. So yeah. That's better. crazy. Just had some good sausages, some good cookies, and some good warm, just like berry juice. I don't know what it was, but it was delicious. And just kind of chatting, hearing the different stories, and you hear the wolves in the distance howling. So now we're gonna take our way here back to our hotel. And I think we'll call it a night after this, guys. So we'll catch you bright and early for the morning. Hopefully we'll get some amazing pictures of the sunrise. And it is in fact morning, although it doesn't really look like it. Sun rises here at like 10 in the morning and sets at like 2.30. Um, but it seems to last for a really, really long time. I think sunrise and sunset yesterday lasted for like six hours. It felt like a perpetual sunset. It is hazy today, like it was last night. We did get to see a little glimpse of the Northern Lights last night, which we're really thankful for, but it does not look like we're gonna do that today. Although we do have this really light snowfall going on, so it's giving me all the winter time vibes. I'm loving it. We have something booked for later today, but as of this morning, we're gonna kind of walk around and do some winter time activities. So let's go. Also, free stuff like sledding. Just across from the sledding is, well, another sled. This one's uh, pretty unique in the sense that somebody rides here and someone pushes over there. So depending on their strength and ability of endurance, they can make this person go real fast. It's designed for kids. So um, we're gonna see, see how it works out. Hopefully we can go fast. All right, climbing in. We're gonna see if this works. I'm in this little basket thing here. And Jordan is over there. Ready? <laughs> so it's still snowing here quite a bit and it's gotten really, really dark. So in order to abide by Finnish law, we're gonna have to grab dinner a bit early since the restaurant's only open from five to six. Um, they do offer takeaway back to the room, but want to get some di different atmosphere. We're gonna grab some pizza on the inside. 
Ooh, it's so chilly. So now it's time to warm up. We're gonna head over to the sauna to experience a Finnish sauna tradition or at least as close as we can get here at the Apuka Resort. So we're gonna walk over there and meet with someone who's gonna walk with us and we try to ask what we should wear because we've seen some people like walking around with almost nothing on besides a bathroom. So we're a little worried. And the lady was like, oh, we just typically don't wear anything in the sun. So we have that, but we brought a swimsuit so we can film on the inside. So we'll catch up with you guys when we're nice and warm and experience that amazing sun. <laughs> It's hard to breathe, it's so hot in here. My lord, I don't know how people do it. But you know what, we're here for the experience. We're gonna try and do it as much as we can and not die from the heat. Right now it's registering at about 50 degrees Celsius. Boy, oh boy, is it hot. So, we, so the package that comes with this, we get our own private bathroom, changing room, toilet, and there's water for us to drink, as well as bathrobes and these slippers that don't fit me. And then right outside is the wood burning sauna, which takes some time to heat up, but it's kind of a cool little cozy area. So we'll definitely check that out towards the end as it has time to warm up. Oh my gosh. That's unlike anything I've ever experienced before in my life, especially to go from the hot, hot room out into the ice cold snow. But when you're in there, like my nose hurts to breathe. My necklace is hot to the touch. Probably should have taken this off. We've already had to tap out once or twice. But Jay says that the wood burning sauna is ready to go. So we're gonna give that a shot. When he was showing us it in the little demo, it was virtually impossible to see in there. So we'll see what we're able to film, but you should at least be able to see the pretty fire. The difference between the two rooms is crazy. The electric one is such a dry heat that adding the steam to it just makes it unbearable. It got up to 60 plus degrees Celsius in there, which is too hot in Fahrenheit. This one is a little bit tamer, at least when you first walk in. So adding the steam actually lets it get a little humid in here. So I'm actually sweating in this one where it was not in the other. I was just miserable. But we're gonna finish up in here, shower off, and then we have another activity in just a little bit. Boy, oh boy, did this last excursion go out on a bang. I feel like so much happened in the last three hours. It was, it was an adventure, that's for sure. Um, first off, everybody on the resort kept telling us Huskies was the coldest thing. There's no way Huskies was colder than that. For the whole three hour adventure from 8.30 to about 11.30, it was freezing. Oh. Freezing, freezing, freezing. And the um, snow just was coming at you sideways too, which... Yeah, the beginning of the journey, we start right at the resort and then we go across the lake. Um, it's obviously path, it's not, we're on the lake, but we go by it. So it's just this big plain mm -hmm. where wind is able to travel and it just whips at you. Um, even though if we have these like six layers <laughs> and we, and the driver at least, they have heated handlebars. Mm -hmm. On the way back, it didn't matter. The wind was so strong. We're going about 30 miles an hour. Wind's coming across 30 miles an hour. Like one side of my whole body <laughs> is frozen solid. Yeah. I feel like the whole dumber and dumber episode where you have to like rip me off of the <laughs> moped. It's definitely better once you're amongst the trees and everything, but um, yeah, I don't know. So cold. There's no way Huskies was colder. Um, so dress warm if you're coming here. And they do have stuff that they provide you, but the layers that you have underneath, I feel, make all the difference. Also, what makes all the difference? Listening to the guide. <sighs> he mentioned just stay in the tracks of the person in front of you. And I, there was one person that could not stay on the path. And I don't know if it's because she was the only rider by herself. So like there wasn't enough weight on the bike or if she just was like swerving out of other people's lanes. But she spun out when we first started um, I don't know, like every 20, 30 feet. Yeah, it was pretty bad. We actually didn't end up getting to go for quite a bit. <laughs> like 30 minutes of it was like, stop, go, stop, go. 
<laughs> because this person kept spinning out. And I'll give them the benefit the like it is difficult to steer it a bit mm -hmm. because the it's the, like a jet ski. It, yeah, it, like the skis themselves want to go the past of least resistance, and that happens to be other marks where the other treads are. What we learned though is that Jordan's the heck of a, a snowmobile driver. He did great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We uh, would purposely slow down a little bit so I could speed up <laughs> and go over the bumps and everything. And turning was, I think, it was easy. But again, some people struggled. And that pretty much wraps up the whole adventure that we we made it back here. I mean, the it was a long time on that snowmobile. It felt like forever. And then we stopped part way to again get sausages and hot food by the fire, which is nice. But yeah, and you it have is to drive it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I gotta drive it too. But it feels so good to be back in the warm room. And we leave bright and early tomorrow. So that's gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed country number 17. Let us know in the comment section down below where you think we should go next. Again, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell to be updated if you like videos like these. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.